This picture is presented to you with the compliments of the Alice Chalmers Manufacturing Company in cooperation with the American League of Professional Baseball Clubs. Keeping fit begins in American playgrounds where outdoor competitive sports build strong bodies. Play ball, play ball. The baseball game is just about to start. Play ball, play ball. Get in there and swing, America. Swing that bat. Swing down the baseline. Beat out the throw. Play ball. The baseball game yes, sir. It pays to play in America. You've seen sensational history-making events in baseball this season. A new world's record in hitting. New stars have smashed their way into the headlines. Some of the old stars have won new honors that will place them in baseball's Hall of Fame. But this year, for the first time, our camera brings together three of the greatest living players of the game. The all-time, all-star outfield, Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Chris Speaker. What a batting lineup this would make. The baseball records and baseball history made by these three players are monuments that make them immortal in the whole world of sport. Even today, these great men are the idols of baseball fans, young and old. They still enjoy the undying devotion and loyalty of fellow sportsmen. It's the ninth inning for Cobb, Ruth, and Speaker. It's been a swell game they've played, but they're not through. They're still helping young players, new stars, to carry on. Well, if it's stars you want, here's the whole constellation at the All-Star Game, the ninth annual baseball classic that brings together the brightest stars in both leagues. Briggs Stadium is a scene of action. That makes everybody happy because Detroit is always a red-hot baseball town. And Briggs Stadium is one of the finest, most modern baseball plants in the world. Up to this time, the American League has won five of these All-Star Games against three for the Nationals. But there's a new feeling of tension in the air about this game. If you're figuring the American League hitting against the National League pitching, you'd better flip a coin, because this time it's a toss-up. Don't point, mister. Anywhere you look, there's a star around here. A cracked defensive man at the hot corner, Ken Keltner of Cleveland. And there'll be power in the infield with Cecil Travis of Washington. Long distance hitter, Jimmy Fox and Rudy York. And here's another great pair. Joe DiMaggio and his brother Dominic. They'll be power at the plate for the American League today. And here's Bob Feller, Cleveland's pitching ace. Meet Ted Williams, another batting champ from Boston. Say, Ted, got any base hits in that bat of yours? Oh, I think I'm going to do all right. What makes you think so? Well, I've always hit good in this Detroit park. They throw in where I'm swinging, and I'll be swinging. Might mean the old ballgame. The ninth inning. With the score of five to three against the American League, Frank Hayes pops out to Herman for the first out. Keltner batting for Smith, swings and beats out a hit to short. One gone, one on. Joe Gordon follows with a single to right. That leaves Keltner at second, Gordon on first, and Travis up. With Paso bearing down, Travis walked and coming up. Still only one out. Joe DiMaggio whacks the grounder to short. And Travis is forced out at second. Keltner scored on the play. That makes it five to four with Gordon on third and DiMaggio on first. Two outs. The winning runs on the sacks. And look who's up. Ted Williams. Remember that promise, Ted. If you got a hit in that bat, let's have it now. Here comes the pitch. There it goes, a home run. A home run by Ted Williams. There's the ball game and victory seven to five for the American League All-Stars. The sixth game won in nine years of this All-Star Game Classic. And here's the man who did it. Ted, there's one promise you made good on. How does it feel to win a ball game like this? Yes, hitting that home run in the All-Star Game in the ninth inning was certainly a big thrill that I'll never forget the rest of my life. 
parade of the greats goes on. It's Connie Mack Day at Chai Park, Philadelphia. Yes, it's the grand old man of baseball having his day after 58 years of campaigning, the longest service record in organized baseball. And lest we forget, this is the man who's won nine American League pennants and has brought home World Series victory five times. President William Herridge presents this gift from the club owners. For the name of Connie Mack is synonymous with baseball's development. A generation ago, his million dollar infield was the talk of the nation. And many a great player like Waddell, Collins, Simmons, Grove, found fame under the guidance of this dean of the American sport. From the scorching swing of the pitcher's arm to the split second power of the batter's wallop, only 60 feet, six inches separate the nerve centers of baseball's offense and defense. Here's where ball games are won and lost. And what a battle of bats in 41. At the Detroit plate, big gun of the Tiger offense was Barney McCoskey. The veteran Connie Mack found new hitting blood for his Philadelphia Athletics in Dick Siebert and Sam Chapman. Down in St. Louis, Luke Sewell, the manager of the Browns, has this leather-busting trio. Cullenbine, Grace, and Judnick. Take Cecil Travis of Washington, for example. Here's the style of a fine placement hitter. No slugging in this swing, just smoothness, perfect control in the stride and swing. Now here's the batting form of a Yankee who tries for the jackpot every time. Charlie Keller, a power hitter. Plenty of home runs in this bat. Jeff Heath of the Cleveland Indians gets his distance in a different way. Those strong arms have pushed many a hit into the bleachers. Dick Siebert of Connie Mack's Philadelphia Athletics, with a rather odd stance, enjoyed a fine year at bat. But there was one bat that beat out a different tune this year. A bat that drummed out hit after hit with a roar that echoed in the grandstand. A bat that smashed a record of nearly half a century. Here is baseball history in the making. Not since 1897, when we, Willie Keeler, set the world record of hitting safely in 44 consecutive games, have baseball fans seen a hitting champion like this. July 2nd was a tense day. Keeler's old record had been tied. In the fifth inning, Joe's line drive into the stand turned a new page in baseball history. But Joe didn't stop. Couldn't 45 be stretched to 55? And it was. The Yankee Clipper connected for a number 55. And DiMaggio came through a final time. Safe hits in 56 consecutive games. An all-time record. Set for the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. The fans of the nation rose in tribute. Sports reporters joined the name of DiMaggio with such greats as Cobb and Ruth. And Joe's Yankee teammates rallied behind the new champion with a spirit that rolled them to another pennant. Maybe you've never thought of this, but pitchers and hitters have a lot in common. The fundamentals are much the same. Split-second timing, perfect balance, perfect swinging power. And for every champion batter that comes along, some great pitcher develops the wizardry to make him fan the air. Dick Newsom, a newcomer to the Boston Red Sox, was the winner of 19 games. A promising young twirler is Philip Marshaldon of the Philadelphia Athletics. The veteran submarine ball artist, Eldon Auker, pitched steadily for the St. Louis Browns. Big Al Benton, Detroit right-hander, had both relief and starting duties to account for 15 games in the win column. Red Ruffing and Lefty Gomez, veteran Yankee hurlers, accounted for 30 victories during the season. Newspapers cry the names of spectacular players, men with dash and color, but Lefty Grove has made the headlines for many seasons. For 17 years, Lefty Grove has gone along winning ball games year after year, a good, dependable pitcher doing his job well. But wise baseball prophets like Lefty's Boston manager, Joe Cronin, watched the veteran Southpaw building steadily to a great day. 
A day that only a handful of men have ever thrilled to. Then the big day came. The nation cheered the man who had pitched his way to lasting fame. July 25th, 1941. Lefty Grove won his 300th major league game. The first man in a decade to perform this pitching feat. And so a 12th name must be added to the roster of great hurlers in baseball's Hall of Fame. Robert Moses Lefty Grove. Perfect control is what keeps these veteran stars going long after many a pitcher is through. Dutch Leonard and Ted Lyons, the knuckleball artists. Each has his own way of gripping the ball. On the left, Leonard uses the knuckles of two fingers running with the seams of the ball. On the right, Lyons grips the ball across the seams with three fingers, digging the nails into the cover. Here's a test of control. By the way, did you ever wonder where some of these big stars come from? Well, a good many of them come right off the farm. Matter of fact, one of the most popular young stars today got his first call to baseball just like this. In his overalls, sitting on his father's tractor. Know who this farm boy is? Bob Feller. Yes, sir, a real Iowa dirt farmer and proud of it. And here's an interesting fact. When they're all through playing baseball and looking for a place to settle down, a lot of stars head right back to the farm. This dairy farm belongs to Walter Johnson. Remember him? Of course you do. Walter Johnson was one of the greatest pitchers of all time. And here he is working on his own farm. And he's just as good in the cow barn or on a plow as he was in the American League. 1941's baseball season reached its climax when thousands of eager fans jammed the turnstiles to witness the blue ribbon event of the sporting world, the World Series between the New York Yankees and the Brooklyn Dodgers. And boy, what a series. For 21 long years, the Dodger fans had waited to see their favorites in the world finals. If enthusiasm would win, Brooklyn was a cinch. Business stopped and Brooklyn's thousands went wild. The Yankees had the edge in experience. Many of these 1941 stars were veterans of former series. Rival managers Joe McCarthy of the Yankees and Leo Jarosher of the Dodgers had a friendly word for each other as the opposing pitchers were announced. The first game at the Yankee Stadium is about to get underway. Starting on the mound for the New Yorkers is Red Ruffing. Facing him for Brooklyn is Kurt Davis. The national anthem is played with players and crowd at attention. Then it's play ball before more than 68,000 fans. The first game gets underway. There was little action until the last half of the second inning. Joe Gordon at bat with a count at two and two. Blasted one of Kurt Davis's pitches on a trip to Mars for the first home run of the series. In the last half of the fourth, the Yankee bomber connected for what had all the appearances of a circuit club until Joe Medwick took matters in his own hands with a sensational one-handed leaping catch against the concrete wall. But the Yankees were not to be denied. After Keller walked, Bill Dickey drove him the rest of the way around with a tremendous double off the right center field wall. In the sixth inning, after Charlie Keller walked, he went to third on Dickey's single and scored run number three for the Yankees when Gordon followed with a base hit. This was enough for Davis, who was replaced at this point by Casey, with the Yankees on the front end by a score three to one. The Dodgers scored one more in their half of the seventh to make the score three to two. In the ninth inning with Brooklyn runners on first and second, one out, Herman Franks, a pinch hitter, hit into a fast double play, ending the ball game. We'll run that last play over to show you what happened at second base. The boys were playing for keeps with the championship at stake. Ruffing was the winning pitcher, Davis the loser, by a score of three to two, which gave the Yankees the jump in the series. The fourth game of the series, which was played in Brooklyn, found Atlee Donald the Yankee starting pitcher, Kirby Higby his opponent for Brooklyn. Reeser's fifth inning home run, scoring Walker ahead of him, accounted for two runs putting the Dodgers in front. Brooklyn leading by a four to three score going into the last half of the ninth. Two men out, 
and the base is empty. Henrik struck out. But when Owen allowed the third strike to get away from him, Henrik reached first safely. That spark touched off the fireworks. DiMaggio followed with a single to left. With the count two strikes and no balls, Keller doubled high off the right field screen, scoring Henrik and DiMaggio. Before the inning was over, the Yank Bombers had scored four times. The final count read, Yankees seven, Dodgers four. The ninth inning, wow! A tough game for Brooklyn to lose, as this victory gave the Yankees a three to one lead in the series. Still in Brooklyn for the fifth, and what proved to be the final game of the series, with Ernie Bonham warming up for the Yankees, and Wyatt trying for his second victory for Brooklyn. In the second inning, after Keller walked, he raced around to third on Dickey's single to center. Wyatt made a wild pitch, and Keller scored easily. Gordon singled to right, scoring Dickey, who had moved to second on the wild pitch, putting the Yankees ahead by a score of two to nothing. In the last half of the third for Brooklyn, Wyatt doubled deep into left field. He moved to third on an infield hit and scored Brooklyn's lone run of the ball game on Reeser's fly to Henry. In the Yankee fifth, Tommy Henry connected with one of Wyatt's curveball pitches for an over-the-wall excursion, and the Yankees were in front three to one. In the ninth inning, when Wasdell batted for Reese and flied to DiMaggio in center field, the New York Yankees, behind the four-hit pitching of Bonham, had regained their title of champions of the baseball world for the sixth time under manager Joe McCarthy. And another great baseball season is over. New records have been set. New stars have been discovered. Old stars have found new fame. Thornton Lee, Bob Feller, Joe Gordon, Lefty Grove, 300-game winner. Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak. Ted Williams, Boston's 400-hitter. All outstanding players of the year in the American League. It's men like these that carry baseball forward. Better, more thrilling each year. This picture was presented through the courtesy of the Alice Chalmers Manufacturing Company and the American League of Professional Baseball Clubs.